story of the chakras. Well, this is a very ancient story, as old as the Hinduism. It's a science, it's a philosophy, it's wisdom that through different authors, first in the Eastern world, after in the Western world, most recently, has been brought to our lives. Right now, the book Wheels of Life is kind of the Bible of the chakras. It is how we understand the chakras right now, because there are different versions. It is said that there are all like hundreds and even thousands of chakras all over our body. But there are seven main chakras, depending on the version again, but seven. Some people might wonder, is this real? Is this something scientific? Well, there has been experiments where yogis have been meditating, focusing on each of the chakras and has actually been measured. There is an electromagnetic spectrum. So we could say that it is scientifically proved. Even though if you don't believe in chakras, take this as a system. Because nowadays we have all knowledge out there. You can go to internet, find anything you want, truth or not, but a lot of information. So the thing is to find the right information and to put that in order in systems. Take for example the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It is a pyramid where the base is the survival, then like safety, feelings, self-proud, self-esteem, until you reach the transcendence. Or take for example, Tony Robbins, the six human needs. It's a similar system. So this is also a system that facilitates to learn how to understand our body how to understand also our feelings, our mindset, and ultimately our spirituality, our spirit. Everything is connected. You are healthy mentally, probabilities are high that you are also physically and spiritually and emotionally healthy as well. So if you take each chakra one by one, each of them with a different meaning, you can keep balance, try to get the balance on every aspect of that part of your life and in that sense you can achieve balance in the whole, your whole uh, life. first chakra, the root chakra, it is in the base of our spine, it's associated with the color red and it's the most, the earliest chakra. It's about survival. If we don't have shelter, we don't have food, we don't have uh, clothes, we don't worry about anything else. It's the same that the Maslow says. So, for example, if you take a tree, and move it and root it and move it to another environment, it, is, will, be, it will be difficult for the tree to survive, especially the conditions are different. So for the humans are similar. First, when we are born, we first thing is to, to survive. But it's not only when we are born, it's in the stages of our life when we have big changes or even big traumas this first chakra is compromised. So this chakra is blocked by fear. I can still remember the first day when I arrived in Liverpool. It was a lot of my first, to be honest. First time when I left my home country. First time when I was completely by myself. First time when I couldn't really speak the same language as the people surrounding me. I remember feeling 
mortified completely. I was scared of the unknown land that was lying in front of my eyes. Most of all, I think I was scared of loneliness and homesickness more than I ever thought I would be. Little did I know at that time that the real adventure was just about to begin. So we have the second chakra, the sacral chakra, that is below our navel, and it is rated with the sense of enjoy the life, of pleasure, of sensuality, even sexuality, and this sense of being able and have the right to have abundance in your life, to, to, to really to enjoy, to have come here, not only to survive, but to really take advantage of, of this life. It might be blocked by guilt, but if you overcome that, that feeling, you know that you deserve to be happy. My little getaway almost made me lose some of the most important people in my life. I missed my best friend's wedding and my mom's birthday. I can almost feel the disappointment in their voices when I told them that I couldn't come. I have never ever felt guiltier in my life. Those feelings don't just go away too fast. Sometimes you are stuck with them forever, even after you manage to gather forgiveness. Then we go to the solar plexus chakra, third chakra. That is about willpower, about being able to achieve things in life. It's very, very related with the ego. But the ego must be used wisely, like not too low, like being uh, to have low esteem of yourself, for example, not too high, to be too aggressive. So the balance is the virtue, as Aristotle said. So it's uh, to be humble, but at the same time to have this power, this energy to achieve things and to believe in yourself. I think one of the hardest parts was dealing with the loneliness that came together with this experience. I remember looking at the pictures of my friends and family all the time, just so I could feel closer to my loved ones. Then the fourth chakra, the heart chakra. What is about? Yes. Well, it's about love. It's about compassion. It's about this sense of unity with all that exists. It's about giving. And when you give, the more you give, the more you receive. So it's something that comes naturally. Sometimes we might uh, feel grief, pain, for uh, if we lose um, somebody in our lives. But have in mind that this love is everywhere. So when th this, the love is also energy. So when it is lost in some way, it will appear in your life in another way. But nothing really compared to the troubles I had making myself understood in the UK. All the troubles I had accepting myself and trying not to feel ashamed and so embarrassed in all the moments when people just stared at me so confused, trying to figure out how to explain things easier to me. I felt weak and stupid most of the times. I felt useless and confused. In those moments, I just wanted to jump straight on the next flight to my country and never come back. The throat chakra is about communication, it's about speaking your truth. If you speak your truth, not only like outside, within yourself, you, are, you have integrity, you are honest with yourself then you can keep this chakra balance. And also, actually, also to speak aloud, to, to say what it is, well, it is your truth. Your truth might not be the same truth that for other person. You might have that into account. But it is about understanding what it is for you and being able to share with, you, with other people. Getting used to my job wasn't any better either. I might have said a few white lies here and there without realizing what consequences those tiny lies implied. I still remember how I couldn't understand anything during the interview, so I would just nod or say yes most of the times, hoping that he wouldn't be able to tell. 
My first day wasn't exactly what I imagined. In my defense, how was I even supposed to know that they were going to make me use the printer? Little did I know that the printer was just a test and my boss had been supervising me for a while. Needless to say, I failed the test and I never touched that printer again. The sixth chakra, brow chakra or also called the third eye, it is about vision, insight, understanding. So since we are young, our family, the society, our teachers give us different beliefs that because we are children we believe everything we take and we integrate into our, ourselves. But there is a moment when you can really think this is really true this is really true for me it might be other way so this is when you start discerning so this uh, visualization is both ways outside but also inside also called insights so when you get to understand comprehend what is this world about? What is this life? But everything happens for a reason. Despite having some pretty bad days when I first arrived there, I met a girl from my country one day while I was out. Since meeting her, my whole mood changed drastically. I could finally talk to someone and make myself understood. She showed me all the nice places in Liverpool and also taught me some English. I started feeling much more confident in myself and my abilities. And the crown chakra, seven chakra. It is the most spiritual. It is that the one that connects us with the cosmos, with the, all that exists. So the same that the first chakra connects us with the earth, keep us grounded. The seven chakra makes us more spiritual. And it's good to have all balance because how we can really enjoy this life the most at the most is to really be grounded but also have this understanding of unity of that everything is energy and we are all connected that is how you can manage your life in the best way i felt part of the community in the end and i found it hard to leave since i was finally finding my own place in that city i was going to miss all the people that i've met and all the connections that we have created and it was tough, I'm not gonna lie, it was painful. But I made it. My point is, don't be afraid to open that door. Don't be afraid to leave some of your dearest memories behind. Staying in one place won't help you grow and improve, and I learned that the hard way. Keep moving and keep trying. And one day you'll realize you have created the best memories of your life without even knowing it. Well, Tanya, so what do you think about, tell me about these chakras, you were telling something before, can you explain it again?
Yeah, when you do meditation, you can focus just in one specific chakra, or you can like imagine that there is a flow running all your spine, and all the chakras are working. So it depends on you and w where you want to work on. Yes. Yes, but it's not only about meditation, it's also having to account every aspect of each chakra and work on that mentally and emotionally. And of course, after do your meditation, as you want, etc. But it's, it's all connected, you know, like with emotions, with you, your mind, uh, put in order all the structures that you have in mind and uh, think positively, for example, work on, on the compassion, etc., etc. And it is an ongoing work yeah. because you might be very well right now, but something happens in your life and then one of your chakras or more mm -hmm. unbalanced. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, an ongoing all yeah. your life. Yes. <laughs> Jill, how, is, how have chakras helped you in your life? I suppose I've only just really started to look at them. I've always known they've been there, um, but through looking at things like the law of attraction, it's just made me more curious, and I can see the link with that. Um, I think for me, it was being blocked in the solar plexus chakra. That was one that I felt was blocked. So I think working on that a little bit more um, we'll start to help to clear that. When you say... I think self-esteem and things like that. So, um, yeah, just not feeling confident in various things. So, yeah. What about you? Mine's... and restart, reboot, mm. so mm. to speak. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, and then the other one for me is, I suppose, the throat chakra. Um, when I'm comfortable talking about something, I'll talk for England, but if I'm not comfortable in a situation, I'll maybe sit back and say nothing and observe more. And sometimes I just need to speak up a little bit more. So I think they were the two areas for me that of at the moment highlighted. Yeah. So have you moved mm. 
No, no I haven't quite put into practice. Not as much as I would like. Um, I've I've done some of the reading to focus on that and little tips that will help to to do that. So um, yeah, just asking the right questions, starting it, and again the two link because mm. it's about confidence. Um, but recognising that I've got something that can help others. Pero... 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 Pero...